And welcome to the CBC Alumni Focus. I am the Alumni Director, Rob Stagenborg, and very pleased to have our guest today, Cameron Poole, Class of 2005. Cameron is the Director of Diversity and Inclusion at uh, in Equity at the Clayton School District, and Cameron's doing some great things. We'll get into that in a minute, but Cameron, welcome to the Alumni Focus, man. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to be here. So like I said, you graduated in 2005. Now you're, you're uh, doing big things in the Clayton School District. What was it that drew you to uh, to to become to go into education? Uh, you know, man, I um, you know, growing up, man, I I, I really enjoyed school, and, and I knew, you know, just in terms of, especially in getting in the right situation and looking at a lot of the teachers, you know, um, you know that I had in high school, um, how much they enjoyed, you know, what they did. Um, so, you know, education was always something I'm like, you know what, you know, it, it seems like something that's fulfilling, um, you know, and definitely something I can see myself doing long term. You know, so my initial thing, especially was, um, you know, when I first got out, I was teaching high school and, and coaching football and track and some other things. So kind of, you know, being that teacher and that coach and, you know, uh, really, really enjoying that factor, especially with the athletics mixed in. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, one thing, especially as I got into the profession and started to see things on the other side and, and I was reflecting on my own experience, you know, really, really having a teacher, you know, that, or an administrator that looked like me that had a similar experience as me. So that was, that was very motivating and, and really working to, you know, be a change in that and, and kind of be an example of, in that and hopefully use that to spur movement you know, and recruitment and interest, you know, in the profession, you know, with, especially with black males. So kind of all that compounded into one, I think it's kind of, you know, let me, you know, where I've been so far. You know, that's, that's a really interesting point. Cause again, as I'm talking to a lot of the younger alumni, you know, a lot of them say they go into certain fields or teaching because there aren't people who look like them who are in the positions. And again, that's really changing here in America. There's so many, uh, so much diversity and inclusion in the, in the education field. I think really education has led the way in, in term, terms of healthcare as well. You know, I've been very progressive uh, as opposed to, and again, in your position, you know, that's what you do. So you want to talk about your role with Clayton and, and what you're doing and, and how you're trying to bring all that in this day and age. You know, again, we just had, you know, huge news yesterday about the, the issue. So you're definitely dealing with some challenges, uh, but you want to talk about your position and your role. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, super, you know, multifaceted just in terms of, you know, I think it being the first, you know, being a newly created role and me being the first person in it, you know, a lot of it kind of mirroring, you know, a lot of, you know, the work that I deemed important and, and would want to do. So, you know, from a, you know, I think the big thing, you know, one of the big things we hammer in, you know, especially with our professional development is kind of developing language around, around perspective, humanizing experiences, um, you know, and, and having a certain level of empathy, you know, for kids. And I, and I think the big thing is, you know, and one thing that I've noticed is, you know, kind of forcing, you know, working to force teachers, administrators out of their normal comfort zones and kind of meet kids, you know, where, where they are. I think, you know, especially looking at a, at a school like CBC is interesting because, you know, it's a private school. Kids come from tons of different, you know, municipalities and grade schools and things like that. So kind of everyone's new. Um, and I think, you know, because of that, there's kind of somewhat of a lens to kind of figure things out about kids based off of where they, you know, where they matriculate from, you know, to kind of meet them where they are. So kind of pretty much meant painting the picture that if I don't have a certain experience, I don't know anything about an experience. And it's up to me to kind of be culturally responsive to get to know my kids individually to know what their experience are, yeah, experience is, because I don't have that shared experience. Um, so a lot of professional development revolving around that, you know, taking looks at curriculum, um, you know, and, and how can the curriculum be more culturally responsive and representative of everyone's cultures. Um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one culture and consultation, you know, with, with, with teachers and, you know, and with students just around their, their overall experiences. Like, like take what we're going through now, you know, I, I made a point in, in talking with the staff in the district in terms of being careful when we had these conversations around race, around law enforcement, how that plays into each you know person and their demographic. And pretty much our kids have been having these conversations since they've been in school. I made a correlation with, uh, with Trayvon Martin happening in 2012. 
So if you got a kid who's a sophomore or junior, since they were in the first grade, these things have kind of been happening and kind of, we paint the narrative of, as if we're having a brand new conversation and it may be more so brand new for us than it is for them, you know, in that regard. So, you know, being, being conscious of that. So how, how are we having the conversations and are we doing, are we doing more harm than good, you know, and, and, and understanding that and who's, whose perspective are we asking to understand more so than someone else's perspective? And is everyone taking kind of a shared responsibility in that? So um, really getting people to think about that conversation, especially, you know, just like at CBC and, and working in, in different, you know, predominantly, you know, white districts, um, you know, chances are there might be two black kids in the class, three black kids in the class. So when we're having these conversations, are we acknowledging the fact that, you know, there's already somewhat of an isolating type of feeling and what are the comments and what are the things being said and, and who's who's forced to carry what weight in those conversations. So kind of just being being mindful of the individual, you know, and the individuals in the room and kind of letting that dictate, you know, how we how we go about things. And I would imagine in your role that, that part of it is educating the adults, you know, who yeah. can be, you know, uh, programmed or, or, or just they've, they've been raised in one sort of way with uh, one sort of way with a, a totally different belief system. And now that belief system has been kind of questioned or, or or there's been some shifting in that. And so, you know, in, in dealing with your peers, I guess there, there's a lot there in having to be respectful of them in their positions, but also letting them understand what the real deal is. You want to talk about some of, some of that work you've been doing? Yeah. So, man, so a lot of it, you know, the majority has been like professional learning, you know, with the adults and and getting people to see the difference between an opinion and a perspective, you know, uh, a perspective is your lived experience and the way you see things because of your lived experience. Like, you know, I'm a, I'm a black male, you know, I went to North County. I mean, I grew up in North County. I went to high school at CBC. I have a certain perspective, the way I view things based off of that experience, which no one can deny. Now I can have certain opinions, which people can question, but in terms of perspective, we can't deny someone's perspective. And I think we, I think we mix opinion and perspective together so much. And when you question someone's perspective, you question their humanity. When you question someone's opinion, you kind of question their thinking. So kind of being a difference in that. So when we're asking questions, are we questioning, are we questioning their opinion or are we asking questions to get to know their perspective? So kind of really painting things, you know, in, in that lens in terms of you know, helping our, helping our teachers and our staff understand, you know, uh, pretty much understanding students. Because if they come from a neighborhood that you've never been to, if they're a race that, you know, you're not accustomed to being in social contact with, if you don't have any education or any resources to really, you know, help you in that, in that regard, how are you going to know how to deal with that kid? Which is, you know, which is a, a boat that every teacher ends up in. But I think the big thing is acknowledging that, you know, and as we acknowledge that, are we are we engaging and building relationships, you know, in order in order to kind of combat against that? You know, one of the great things, certainly Clayton School District has a tremendous reputation, been very much of a leader here in St. Louis. And, and certainly when you took it, talk about diversity in Clayton, you're talking about religious diversity, you're talking about ethnic diversity. There, there's, there's so much more to the diversity. You know, first of all, what has been your experience with the, the folks at Clayton? They, they're a great group. They do, they do great work. They have a great reputation. I'm assuming you, you've really uh, enjoyed working with that level of professionalism with that group. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been, you know, it, it's been a really good year just in terms of, you know, the buy-in and, and the kind of the, uh, you know, the the dedication, you know, to the work and, you know, and improving, you know, in those areas, you know, like like with a lot of schools, you know, that are, that are very high performing, you know, who are those kids that slip through the gaps and especially, you know, in, in America and in St. Louis, usually, you know, those kids that slip through, the, you know, through the gaps are usually kind of in those underrepresented categories. So, um, there's definitely a commitment to the work, you know, and, and people are, you know, very, very open minded in terms of challenging their own thinking um, in, in the way they've always done things and, and, you know, creating avenues to be self reflective, you know, on their own practices and, you know, kind of hammering, hammering home the, the, the thought process that any, any change starts with like with the individual. You know, we can point to a lot of systemic issues, you know, that exist and we can point to different policies, which, you know, definitely need to change as well. But, you know, a, a good culturally responsive teacher can kind of, you know, overturn a lot of those things that might be true outside of the classroom within the classroom. 
So talk about your CBC experience. You mentioned football, and boy, you guys were, were really good back in the day. You had some really good teams. Uh, you still keep in contact with any of your old teammates from the old days here at CBC? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. All the time. Reminiscing, um, you know, uh, you know, looking back on stuff, of course, you know, all the, all the fun, you know, and, and the success we had. You know, it was interesting because our class when uh, two years at the old campus and two years at the new one. Um, so kind of having that split down the middle, you know, was interesting as well. Um, you know, and, and even just talking about how the school has evolved and changed a lot. I know since, you know, we were at the beginning of the part on the new campus, you know, and then kind of just seeing the evolution, you know, of the school as well. So, yeah, we, we keep in contact, contact often, you know, and talk about and make the same jokes we did. 20 years ago. So. There you go. Yeah. So, you know, we have a, a lot of uh, young uh, African-American alums are really starting to reconnect back to the school, you know, providing some mentorship. So again, there's definitely uh, uh, some interest there. So we appreciate, you know, all that you guys are doing. So, but, you know, going back to your days at CBC, who were some of your, your teachers that you uh, kind of had some influence, you know, maybe influenced you a little bit? And if there were none, then just make one up. Oh, tons, you know. Um, let me think back. Uh you're taking me to challenge with my memory now. So I loved, um, I had Mrs. Monks for biology okay. and forensics and anatomy and a couple other courses. Awesome, awesome woman. Um, I loved being in her class. Um, you know, Dr. Doley was awesome you know, and, and taking his AP US history class. And I mean, and hell, I became a history teacher, um, you know, and, and just, the, just the way he taught and, you know, kind of the, the autonomy he gave in our learning was awesome as well. Um, you know, Coach Scott, you know, was awesome. You know, he was the man, um, you know, and then even, you know, even, even playing ball for Coach Shannon, um, you know, he was a stickler back then. You know, definitely, but definitely seen, you know, growth from that. Maybe not in the, maybe not in the immediate, you know, but uh, definitely seeing growth from, you know, having, you know, having him as a coach. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? You know, I can't recall sure. any really bad experiences, you know, sure. um, you know, but those are definitely a few, you know, that, uh, you know, that definitely were awesome, you know, in that regard. Well, a couple of things you know, here at the school, obviously, we're very proud of you and, and very much thank you for representing us so well and, and really helping us share our stories of successful alumni who are out there. So, first of all, right on for that. And thank you. You know, it means so much. But again, you know, as, as people are trying to get more involved and we have a lot of a lot of young uh, you know, students who are looking for the future, what are some words of advice that you would give, some things that you learned along the way that kind of helped you get through those, you know, that 18 to 24 year, that kind of a difficult period of your life. Well, you know, what were some things that, that lessons that you would give to students today? Um, I would definitely say, you know, especially at CBC, soak in the uh, the social experiences. I think, you know, what, what CBC is able to do outside of many other schools, especially in the area, um, was offer kind of a homo, I mean, a heterogeneous social experience with, with people from all over the area, you know, um, you know, different socioeconomic levels, you know, um, you know, whether you're black or white, you kind of get a good, you kind of get a good gambit of people. And, and even in my experiences and being in new places, and you know, whether it's college or career wise, you know, you know, people who live in, you know, Chesterfield or, or U city or town and country or South city or, you know, St. Charles, whatever, like you're, and, and I feel like where a lot of people kind of get stuck in a box. I feel like we we kind of have you know an awesome opportunity to be male, be more well rounded in that regard. And I can definitely say kind of soaking in those social experiences with a with a lot of different people from different areas and stuff like that, you know, was was awesome and good for me. Um, of course, playing sports and football and you know and, and being in the band played a part um, in that as well. Oh, speaking of band, Mr. Arana. Was, was the man too. Uh, I can't forget about him. Uh, but yeah, those, those experiences, man, definitely, you know, helped me, you know, be more well-rounded, especially socially. Um, and I think that's an advantage, you know, that, that, that kids have an opportunity to have. 
you know, and finally, as we're kind of closing up here with Cameron Poole, class of 2005, he's the Director of Diversity, Inclusion, and, and Equity at, at Clayton School District. Did I get your title right? I know those titles get to be a little lengthy, but... Uh, yeah, direct, Director of Equity and Inclusion. So yeah, you can mix equity. in. Yeah, I, know. I hear you though. Again, I'm trying I'm trying my best to be PC here, but uh, again, it's a great it's a great job. It's a great position for you. And again, you know, you're, you're making us so very proud. We're very happy for you. Um, anything else you want to tell the CBC community? Anything anything that we kind of missed? Um, I know we talked. We were going to talk about your award. You're recently uh, named the ed, uh, Educator of the Year for. I'm going to get the organization incorrect. It's uh, a public school uh, teachers association. Again, I'm going to get the name incorrect. But again, that was a huge honor for you to get that award just recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Um, you know, it it, it it always feels good to be recognized for the work that you're doing. Um, and, you know, like I said, just always, you know, no matter where, where we're at, man, having to focus on the kids. And, and again, I think a lot of what I've had to offer from an educational standpoint you know, is a lot of the foundations that I got at the, you know, at CBC, you know, especially from that, from that social aspect and being able to connect with a lot of different kids, you know, from a lot of different backgrounds um, has definitely paid dividends. Um, definitely, I think that social aspect is probably one of the, one of the bigger strengths, you know, that I can point to for that. Again, we're risen with Cameron Poole. Cam, congratulations and good luck, man. We, we really wish you the best success. And again, you're making us so very proud. I know that you're working hard. So again, on behalf of the CUC community, we want to welcome you. Know, thank you for being here with us and we'll catch up with you next time. I appreciate it. All right, I'm going to put you on pause for a second.